welcome once again, friends, to another program in the series Word Impact. And I'm your host, Reverend Valentine Rodney. God has simply just been faithful. My question is, how have you been enjoying your Christian experience? How have you been enjoying your walk with God? We recently had a discussion where I told some believers that the end result or the product of evangelism should be disciples. Here's what Jesus said. Once they become converts, we have a responsibility to teach them to observe all that he has commanded. Then Jesus says, Lo, I am with you every single step of the way. Last week we had started a series that was entitled Fruitfulness, the Hallmark of Discipleship. And in this we were trying to demonstrate that fruitfulness is what God intended for us all. But the kind of fruit that we literally should bear is going to be indicative of our relationship with God. And so we looked at John chapter 15, verses 7 and 8, which reads, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. And so Jesus is therefore highlighted and earmarking that being productive, producing fruit, is one of the absolute guarantees that you have that you are indeed a disciple. We have looked at the fact that fruitfulness is a part of God's original plan for his created order. And God had specified that everything must produce after its own kind. We have looked at the fact that fruit can either be good or it can be bad. And there's a kind of fruit that leads unto death. But then the Bible specifies that the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And so fruit bearing is contrasted in terms of the fruit of the spirit and the fruit of the flesh or what is commonly referred to as the works of the flesh. So a believer being productive is simply what Jesus demands. If you are connected to me, then you're going to have to be a producer, not simply a consumer. Because at some point, there has to be something that manifests simply based on the fact that you have been feeding from me. Your thoughts, your actions are going to be empowered simply by God and his word. And so as we engage with this Christ, we are reminded of a couple of things that I just want to draw our attention to. Because Jesus sets it out quite clearly. Father is the vine dresser, I am the true vine, and believers are the branches. And as branches, the believers or the disciples are expected to produce an abundance of fruit. There must be a harvest that is released based on my association with the Lord Jesus Christ. The level of intimate relationship that literally exists. We also alluded to the fact that there's a culture of dependency between branch and vine. The branch cannot exist on its own. The branch needs the vine for survival and thus it is important that there's a recognition of complete dependence, complete reliance, on, and constant connection. That connectivity has literally got to be maintained. We looked at the fact that the branches depends more on the vine than even the sheep, the shepherd, and a child as it relates to his or her father. And so the idea of union is established here between that level of connectivity, union. Because oftentimes it's difficult to separate vine from branch because one naturally flows into the other and the vine completes the branches. We looked at the Old Testament relationship, but we looked in the New Testament and we see the connectivity 
where Christ is deeply connected to us. We had also looked at the scripture in terms of a branch that is connected but not being fruitful. No, 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 when we say the branch is connected but not being fruitful, we mean the person is abiding in Christ. But there are certain characteristic traits that we are not seen being evident in the life of the believer. Now, the King James Version uses a, 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 some words that says taken away, which some have thought to mean that you just permanently disconnect and cut it off. But there is the possibility of another meaning. Because from the Greek, it also means to lift up from the ground. Right? And we had alluded to that last time. So that you lift it up so that it can now, by next season, become productive because of the attention that is being paid to a branch that is abiding but not producing simply because there are some external conditions that have become limiting factors. So the word of God is critically important. We looked at the pruning process. And this is reserved for branches that are already fruitful. So one, the unfruitful branches that are abiding must be lifted up and brought to a point of restoration and productivity. Whereas the branches that are already producing, spirit-filled, fruit-producing life, here is what happened. The text is going to say that what the vine dresser is going to do is to cut away the dead or the disease aspects of it so that it can increase unproductivity and stimulate growth. Because that is what is desirable. So oftentimes there's removal of what may seem important but can be detrimental. And this is where the whole aspect of discipline comes in. Discipline is not punishment. God's not trying to discipline. He's trying to correct a particular behavior because there is a type of growth that he literally wants to, to, to facilitate. Now, this process may be painful but necessary. And it's important in maximizing potential. And of course, this is going to result in abundance. Because that's one of the key components and factors as it relates to this whole thing of, of being fruitful. God wants us to produce in abundance. That is obviously what is required and what is needed. And so what is the main concern as we view this scripture? Is to promote healthy growth, healthy spiritual growth. So you stop coping and literally start conquering. I'd mentioned last time about trap that had this to say. And every time I read this, it gets to me. And if it be painful to bleed, it is worse to wither. Better be prone to grow than caught up to burn. Is a decision to be made. And so within the context of scriptures, the Bible is going to remind us that we're cleansed by the word. Word of God now becomes our cleansing agents. It, and listen what the word of God does. It condemns sin, but it inspires holiness. It promotes and facilitates growth. It reveals power for victory. Jesus has a responsibility, Ephesians 5.26 to constantly wash his people through the water of the word. So when there is an application of God's word to our lives, it will cause us to live in a particular way. So words of God apply to the lives of the disciples, it is going to result in a pruning process. Because whenever you begin to apply the word of God to your life, any number of things are going to happen. One, it is going to deal with the evil that is within. And it is going to condition and to prepare you for further effective service in God. Now, we want to look carefully at the principle of abiding. Because we have already outlined the connection and the connectivity as it relates to branch and vine. And, and Jesus indicated that if you abide in me and I abide in, in you, you're going to ask what you will and it shall be done. So the principle here that is inherent in the scriptures is that we must abide in Jesus. 
There is no other way to be fruitful without abiding. Because fruitfulness is based on being connected. We have got to maintain that connection. We can't be disconnected and expect to be fruitful. And so the sense of abiding means that I am so connected to Christ that we have become one. There is a level of oneness that is literally prevailing. Now, the relationship that is being shared between us, the vine branch, the believer, Christ is a mutual relationship. Here's what Jesus says. I in them and them in me, that they may become one in us. Look at the level of intimacy based on the connection that is revealed through these particular scriptures. So continued connection and relationship is a matter of choice. I am going to have to make a decision to remain connected to Christ. I am going to have to make a decision that my relationship with him is literally what I want. So it comes through a series of decision making because I value my connectivity with Jesus Christ. Here's what I tell believers. No other relationship that you have is as significant as the one that you have with Christ. No other relationship is as important important as the one that you have with Christ. But all of it is a matter of choice. I must choose not just to be connected, but to maintain that connection with him. So we must decide to do things which expose ourselves to him. Now hear me. I, I cannot grow as a believer if I don't engage in a number of what we call the spiritual disciplines. What are these things? Prayer. Prayer breeds intimacy. Prayer deals with communion and communication. Prayer intensifies, builds, and is the result of maintaining a relationship with the living God. So we must expose ourselves to those things that would promote growth and good health, which means that we have to keep ourselves in constant contact with Him. How is your devotion life? How is your fellowship with the believers? Do you have a time where you separate from the humdrum of activities that sometimes you're surrounded with on a daily basis, the daily grind of activities? Do we find a time where we just withdraw in solitude simply because we want to reflect upon God? We want to promote and to facilitate those things which will result in growth experiences. We want to have a growth curve as it relates to our relationship with Christ. And hear me. Are we doing those things that are vital to and promote good health? We're going to have to make a, a decision there. So based on what we have been studying so far, connection with Christ is what we call union. Remember, I alluded to that in the first program. Union. I am united with. I'm united to. I am a part of. That's what we call union. The, the second thing is dependence on Christ, which is what we call our life. Then you have power and sustenance. But for us to continue with Christ, we must reside. We must stay there. We can't leave. Listen to me. Christianity is not a vacation. It is a life. Christianity is not about visiting relationship. No, 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 no. A visiting relationship is no, no, no. You just don't come to Christ just when you figure you need him. No. It has to be that kind of life where there is constant communication and union with him. Now, we cannot be fruitful if we are disconnected from the source. Many of us, whether potential gardeners or gardeners, or you just simply have some plants around the house. Once that plant breaks off, the natural course of activity is that it dies. Because there is nothing to support the life. The life is based on connecting to the source. 
So the branch is going to provide. Sorry, the vine is going to provide what the branch needs. Let me say that again. The vine is going to provide what the branch needs. But hear me. We must be consciously connected to Christ to produce his character. This is a choice that we make. I no longer want to be pushed and pummeled and conformed to worldly standards and expectations. No. I am making a value judgment. I think the life of Christ, the character that is produced by abiding, is more worthwhile, is more noble than any other type of connection. You see, we must see this life in Christ as being vastly superior to any other life that is lived. A life in Christ is the epitome of a life that is doomed, sorry, a life that is there to be successful. And so we have got to live this Christ life. So under the new covenant in the New Testament, what is envisaged by Christ is that we are connected to him. That is a direct connection. Now, now once you're directly connected to Christ, then fruit bearing is inevitable. But again, we go back to the top. We must abide. The secret to being a disciplined follower of Christ is abiding. The secret to maintaining your Christian conviction is in abiding. We have got to ensure that we maintain this. Because, listen to me, the, object, the simple objective of why Christ wants us connected to him is that we will begin to produce the kind of quality character that the world would be envious of. People will want what we have because they see the quality of that which we are producing. And so my brothers and my sisters, it is inevitable. Once we are disconnected to Christ, the natural outcome is going to be fruit bearing. We are going to be engaged in the productive process. But again, as we look further, what is going to be critically important? Not just the quantity of what we produce, but the quality. The quality and quantity of fruit may vary, but it must be evident. What am I saying? Every believer must be a fruit producer. There must be that evidence within the context of your life. This is something that is never optional, but something that is an imperative. You can't keep receiving from Christ and not be producing on the other end. So as we receive from him, then the very nature, the very quality of Christ now begins to be manifested in our lives until when people see us. Like what they said of the apostles in their day, they will say of us that these have been with Christ. We are seeing evidences of their connectivity and their connection with the Lord Jesus Christ. So the purpose of the branch, as we have elaborated on a bit, is to bear fruit. Every branch must bear fruit. Right now within the Caribbean, especially in my home country of Jamaica, mango season is in full swing. And as long as you, in fact, just this morning, I, 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 I got an opportunity to pick a nice, sweet, julie mango, right? Which I will attend to in short order. But the bottom line is, you don't have this kind of tree. I would never have planted if it, if it were not that it was going to produce fruit. Right? I have several other fruit trees. And the main reason for their existence is to be fruitful. The minute they cease to be fruitful, 
is the day they shall be cut down. Because that's the main purpose. Fruit bearing implies reproduction. And that is an active process. That things are going on to continue what was started. Listen to me. We could do nothing of real eternal value without Jesus. And even though this might sound rhetoric and redundant, we cannot be Christians without Christ. We cannot be fruitful without connecting to him. What are some of the consequences of not abiding? And the Bible gives us several. Number one, cast out as a branch and is withered. So once the connection is not there, there's no possibility of being fruitful, and so the thing is now discarded because it is not connected to the source. And that's why I kept saying earlier, check your connection, check your connection. The Bible said it's gathered and thrown into the fire because it is simply of no use. It is of no value. What do I want to say to us? Your value increases when you are in a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Once you are connected to him, your value is at an all-time high. Listen to me. As a believer, let us never lose our connection or our connectivity because we don't want to be cast out. We want to maintain that principle of abiding. We want to experience that oneness with Christ. That is what our desire is. What that's what our goal is. You see, we're we're not trying to pretend to be what we're not. We want to be genuine, and we want to be accommodative of the process. You see, those that are fruitless, it's like they're wasting their lives. There is no way we should be connected to Christ and there be no evidence of fruit bearing. Can we ask God right where you are, in your sitting room, your living room, your bedroom, the kitchen, right where you are, you're viewing this program, can we just pause for a minute to reflect? Because listen to me, we don't want to be fruitless. We want to be fruitful. Since we are connected to Christ, we want to be bearing. We want to be producing. That is of critical importance. This is what the master intended. This is what Jesus requires for us to live a fruitful life. But listen to me carefully, because we don't want to waste life. We don't want to be living, but there's no real purpose. There's no real reason for our existence. And as I had alluded to in the last program, when Jesus came and he looked at the fig tree, and he saw no fruit on it. How many of us can remember the parable where the, the owner came and the trees were not producing. But then the husbandman said, listen, give me some more time. Let me dig around it. Let me fertilize it. Come back in a year's time. And if it is not producing, then it shall be cut down. I believe that God has given us an opportunity to become fruitful. But there are certain necessary inputs in our lives that is going to promote and to facilitate this. There are certain decisive actions that we must take. We cannot accommodate anything that is going to be stifling our growth and our goal. No, we can't afford to do that. I want first to understand that it is also very dangerous to be disconnected from the source. To be disconnected from Jesus is to be disconnected 
from life. I make this urgent appeal to us today that we recognize the value of simply abiding in Jesus. So Jesus connected abiding to the idea of faithfulness to his word. So if I know begin, so first of all, there's information. There's knowledge that we glean through our reading of the word. So if I'm going to abide, if I'm going to be faithfully connected to Christ, it can't be separate and apart from the word of the living God. The word of God now becomes an integral part of that particular makeup. So I need to be connected. I need to abide. Jesus connected abiding to the idea of answered prayer. Notice what he says. If you abide in me, my words abide in you. You shall ask what ye will and it shall be done. Listen to me. This is the key to answered prayer. Because as we abide in Christ, we begin to pray according to his divine will. The connection is maintained by obedience and prayer. Listen, you see in prayer, we are simply waiting to hear the instructions that God would give so that we could walk in complete obedience to him. Abiding means that we are both faithful and obedient to the requirements as Jesus sets them out and to the instructions as he gives them to us. Faithful abiding disciples should expect answered prayer as part of their relationship with Jesus. So I understand, based on my relationship with Christ, based on the fact that I'm abiding, my prayers are going to be answered. This connection results in asking according to his will, discerned through relationship. So we're getting ready to close. The purpose of fruit bearing is to bring glory to God, not to the disciple. A branch that bears much fruit brings honor to the one who cares for the vine, and a disciple who bears much fruit in a spiritual sense is going to bring honor to God. Real fruitfulness is only determined and observed over an extended period of time. It, I remember I had a mango tree, and for years it was there, wouldn't bear. And the year I said, if you do not bear, I'm going to cut you down. It started to produce. Listen to me. What is your life producing? That is dependent on who you are connected to. Let's abide in the vine. Living God, we thank you for the principle of abiding. We have made a decision to be truly connected to you. And your life must now flow through us. Who you are must be evident in what we are becoming. And so we have made a commitment a Christ-honoring commitment that our fruitfulness will give you glory, but it will also bring you glory. Thank you for the privilege we have that we can go forth and bear fruit that is indicative of our relationship with you. And so express our gratitude and our thankfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Is a lamp into my